This is the new Huawei Mate 60, a phone that should have been impossible for China to produce, and a piece of technology that just completely changed the entire future of US-China relations. On the surface, this new Huawei phone looks like any other smartphone. Beautiful flat screen, fun colors, an extra large camera, but it's what's inside the phone that has completely shell-shocked US politicians. Four years ago, the US government began sanctioning hundreds of Chinese tech companies to contain China's growth and ensure America's position as the world leader in tech. But according to Dan Hutchinson, an analyst with Tech Insights, this Chinese tech breakthrough is a slap in the face to US sanctions. Initially, the Western reaction to the phone was one of speculation. Surely China must have stolen the technology. Which country violated US sanctions and sold these advanced microchips to China? As the Western world freaked out about China's new phone, there was one simple explanation that everyone overlooked. What if China figured out a way to develop their own microchips and completely bypass US sanctions? Everyone, this is the new Kirin 9000 chip, an advanced seven nanometer microchip that contains 100% Chinese technology and was manufactured in China by SMIC, one of China's most promising semiconductor companies. Since 2019, the US government has been actively sanctioning and restricting China's access to chip making tools essential for producing these 5G microchips. Once again, under current US sanctions, this should have been impossible for China to produce. But when you force China into a corner and give them no other option, the Chinese will do what they are best at, innovate, and survive. But there's a lot more to this story, including how the Chinese government played chess against US politicians and launched this new phone at the most provocative time to send the United States a serious message. But before I reveal the true story of how China developed their 5G microchip, I wanna share with you a personal story. Many of you follow this channel for insights into China, and I always work to provide the most professional and highest quality videos. But recently, some of my fans have noticed my look is getting a little sloppy. My hairline is receding, my clothes don't really fit me properly anymore, and recently a clothing company called Roan sent me this email saying, Hi Cyrus, we really love your YouTube channel over here at Roan, and think we can really help you level up your wardrobe with the best performance-driven clothing to make you look and feel your best self. Everyone, let me introduce you to the Roan Commuter Collection, which is the most flexible, breathable, and comfortable pair of clothes I've ever worn. Roan told me this is the ultimate dress shirt that I can wear for literally any occasion. So I decided to test the limits and see what this shirt could do. Flexible enough to do my deadlifts. Is it durable enough to make an athletic movement while playing a round of golf? But most importantly, do I look more professional when I'm sitting in my studio and making the YouTube videos that you love to watch? With Roan's wrinkle-free technology, the answer is yes, because every time I stretch or wear the products, the wrinkles disappear. In addition, I can work out, play golf, and make the best YouTube videos without having to worry about smelling with Roan's Gold Fusion anti-odor technology. If you're ready to upgrade your wardrobe and experience the best in menswear, head to roan.com slash Cyrus and use the promo code Cyrus to save 20% off your entire order. That's 20% off your entire order when you head to rhone.com slash Cyrus and use the code Cyrus. Thank you, Roan, for sponsoring this episode. Now let's reveal how China successfully broke through U.S. sanctions. It all started when U.S. Secretary of Commerce Gina Raimondo flew to Beijing to meet with Chinese officials and deliver an important message. President Biden asked me to come here to convey the message that we do not seek to decouple. We seek to maintain our uh, $700 billion commercial relationship with China. The Biden administration has been caught in a difficult situation. To appear strong to the American public, U.S. politicians make brave speeches, telling Americans the United States is going to decouple from China. But at the same time, Biden sends his most trusted cabinet members to Beijing to try and save face and maintain the $700 billion trade relationship with China. China isn't stupid. They know the games U.S. politicians play, and this time China took advantage of an incredible opportunity. Instead of playing along and graciously accepting the Secretary of Commerce's words, the Chinese government sat back and watched Huawei officially launch the Mate 60 phone at the exact moment that Gina Raimondo arrived in Beijing. Immediately, the visit from the Secretary of Commerce was completely irrelevant. China sent the United States a clear message. If you want to decouple from us, that's your decision. But just so you know, here is the world-class piece of technology that we just developed, which by the way, 
just broke through your US sanctions. The Huawei phone launch will go down as one of the most successful phone launches in Chinese history. News of Huawei's new phone, SMIC's new microchips, and China's massive breakthrough spread like wildfire throughout the Chinese internet. The phone launch immediately made Huawei the national champion and a source of national pride for Chinese citizens. The Chinese press even used a Lord of the Rings analogy and called Huawei's phone launch the return of the king. Wang Zhe Hui Gui, in Chinese. But what makes this phone launch even more remarkable is the fact that no one, and I mean absolutely no one, inside or outside of China saw this phone coming. Tech analysts, industry insiders, and even high-level Huawei employees had zero knowledge Huawei was developing this new 5G phone with Chinese-built microchips. It's a remarkable breakthrough for Huawei who before US sanctions used to be a global smartphone powerhouse. In fact, just three years ago, Huawei overtook Samsung as the world's largest smartphone producer. The title and success were short-lived as US sanctions absolutely hammered Huawei's smartphone business and forced the company to shift their business model to 5G and cloud services in order to survive. In fact, just 12 months ago, Huawei's 78-year-old founder and chief executive Ren Zhangfei sparked alarm in China when he warned the next decade will be painful and that Huawei must shift their focus to surviving. As you can imagine, when US politicians heard the words of Huawei's founder, they were delighted. It seemed the US had won the battle. Many analysts predicted US sanctions could be the end of Huawei, but there was one thing the US government completely overlooked. Huawei is one of the most innovative companies on the planet. In 2020, visual capitalists named Huawei the sixth most innovative company in the world, even ranking the Chinese company ahead of Facebook and Tesla. The secret to Huawei's innovation and growth has always been research and development. In 2022, despite a decline in profit, Huawei invested $23 billion into R&D. Even just last week, Huawei announced it will invest another $1.4 billion on building a new R&D center in Shanghai, hiring an additional 40,000 engineers and scientists. Just two months ago, Huawei founder Ren Jiangfei stated that Huawei will save talent and not US dollars, as he told us more than 207,000 employees around the globe that Huawei will continue developing internal talent and maintain its technological lead in key industries. This is exactly how China won and beat US sanctions. When you are down, invest more. When your competition thinks they won, don't give up. Work harder than you ever have before and xiang banfa, which means to think of a solution. As I look back on the past four years of tech sanctions against China, I now realize what a massive loss this is for the United States and what a massive win this is for China. Instead of embracing competition and learning to work with China, we sanction China's tech companies. This is a very big shift from policy and how the United States used to function. Remember the United States race to the moon against the Soviet Union in the 1960s? The Soviet Union was advancing quicker than the United States in the space race. But instead of sanctioning and tearing down the Soviets, the United States government embraced the competition. In fact, the Soviets played a major role in the United States becoming the first nation to land a man onside the moon. Without the pressure from the Soviet Union, the United States would have never worked as hard as they did and eventually win that race to the moon. Competition breeds innovation, and unfortunately for the United States, they have now unleashed the beast. What's ironic is that the U.S. sanctions against China has been the major catalyst to China's innovation growth. When the U.S. introduced its sweeping set of sanctions against the Chinese semiconductor industry, experts vowed it would kill the Chinese domestic chip companies, or at least freeze their ability to make progress. Industry experts thought that China would be stuck at the 28 nanometer chip for many years to come. But fast forward to now, and China can mass produce second generation 7 nanometer chips domestically. For comparison, the iPhone 14 Pro uses 4 nanometer chips, so China still trails the US by a couple of generations and a couple of years. But here is the important takeaway. China is catching up at an insane speed. At this point, Americans must accept the fact that US sanctions have completely backfired. Instead of handicapping Huawei, the sanctions have helped transform Huawei into a more resilient company and force China to build an entirely new domestic semiconductor industry. This is a very short-sighted mistake from the United States. If we never sanctioned Huawei, there would have never been any incentive for Huawei and the domestic Chinese microchip industry to develop. Chinese companies would simply buy the chips they need from American firms, resulting in tremendous profits for American semiconductor companies like Nvidia, Qualcomm, and Intel. But like I mentioned at the start of the video, 
This new phone has completely changed the future of US-China relations and also changed how many investors are looking at the lucrative semiconductor industry. Let's break it down. The first is the fallout of Secretary of Commerce Gina Raimondo's visit. She came to China to promote stability between the United States and China. Unfortunately, her trip was completely overshadowed by the Huawei phone launch. Within 24 hours, phone covers featuring Gina started trending online, mocking her and the U.S. government's ability to limit China's tech innovation. As the U.S.-China relationship continues to decline, you better believe that Huawei will start eating up a significant market share from Apple. Currently, Apple has a 50% market share of high-end smartphones in China, but patriotic Chinese will be rushing to buy the new Huawei phone to support their country and own a piece of history by purchasing the first Chinese phone to break through U.S. sanctions. Taiwanese tech analyst Ming Shiko, who by the way, is a fantastic follow on Twitter for all things tech related, predicts that with the demand and market influence of the Mate 60 Pro, Huawei's mobile phone shipments are expected to increase by 65% year on year to 38 million units in 2023 and expected to reach at least 60 million units in 2024. In short, this tech breakthrough from China has completely revolutionized the future of Huawei and once again opened the doors to Huawei becoming a global superpower in the mobile phone industry. The biggest loser from this entire ordeal is the American company Qualcomm. China accounts for 60% of Qualcomm's revenue and Huawei was one of Qualcomm's main customers, purchasing approximately 60 million units of hardware from the American company in the last two years alone. Starting in 2024, all of Huawei's phones will use the Kirin processors, meaning that Qualcomm will lose all of its revenue from Huawei starting in 2024, a potential loss of billions of dollars of revenue for Qualcomm. And it goes without saying that the big winner here is China's SMIC, which trades under the number 0981 on the Hong Kong Stock Exchange. The company is the main wafer supplier to Huawei, and the company will see a huge increase in revenue as Huawei completely shifts from Qualcomm to SMIC in 2024. Long term, it would be in China's best interest to see SMIC become the world's biggest and most leading edge wafer producer. With the increased profits in partnership with Huawei, SMIC will have billions of more dollars in revenue to invest into research and development and strive for this exact scenario to happen. Finally, this tech breakthrough will also change the entire future of geopolitics around the world. Other countries, most notably those in the global south, who are ignored by the United States and our allies, have also been paying attention to this latest breakthrough from China. They now know that it's super dangerous to source semiconductors with Western firms, as the US won't hesitate to weaponize the industry for geopolitical ends. Now that a domestic Chinese company is producing world-class tech that supports the future of 5G and 6G, more and more countries will turn to Chinese firms and embrace this new Chinese technology. French geopolitical commentator Anwa Batron says it best when he recaps the entire situation with one simple conclusion. So it's lose, lose, lose for the US. Much more loss than if they hadn't done any of their aggressive actions against Huawei or China's chip sector which again goes to show just how utterly pointless this new Cold War is. Had the United States decided to remain in engagement mode instead of extreme competition mode as they call it, they'd have been much better off. In a word, hubris. Everyone, I hope you enjoyed this deep dive into China's incredible tech breakthrough. This is one of the biggest breakthroughs that we've seen from the Chinese tech industry, and once again, it has completely realigned the future of US-China relations and the entire microchip industry. As this story continues to develop, you can count on this channel to give you the latest updates into everything related to China's tech industry. Once again, I want to thank Roan for upgrading my wardrobe and helping me look sharp. I'm really going to step up my game here on YouTube and make sure that we have the most polished and professional presentation. And that, of course, starts with my wardrobe. So a huge thank you to Roan and make sure that you take advantage of today's special offer. Simply go to roan.com slash Cyrus, use the promo code Cyrus and save an incredible 20% off your entire order. Everybody, thank you for taking time out of your day to spend it with me here on YouTube, and I can't wait to see you all in our next video soon.